When I first started playing Call of the Wild, there was a lot of things that I didn't know because the learning curve is definitely steep to begin with. There were some things that if I had have known back then, they would have massively helped me level up quicker and get through the game. But also, it would have meant that I didn't end up accidentally deleting these zones, killing diamonds with the wrong gun, and it would have made my hunting experience more efficient, but also more fun. So today, I'm going to bring you guys my top five tips that I wish I'd have known when I first started playing, starting off with hunting pressure. Now then, hunting pressure is something that is created when you kill an animal. There's four levels of hunting pressure, starting off from the lowest one, which is a faint purple color, going all the way up to the most intense, which is a hot pink. You can see from the images on screen what each of those look like, and then the final image also shows you what they look like side by side. Now, it's really important for you to know how much hunting pressure you have in one area specifically, because if you create too much, it will actually delete the need zone, meaning the animals will no longer come to that area of the map. Also, it can be really useful if you're trying to track down an animal that you can't find going to the dead center of where the hunting pressure is will give you their tracks that you can then follow until you find it now then as i said it is really important that you guys don't delete your need zones because they are super essential for finding animals and that brings us on to our next tip which is going to be how to find more animals on your reserves now then, I often get a lot of people coming into my stream saying, Hey Andy, listen, I've got Call of the Wild recently and I can't find any animals. How are you finding so many when you're hunting? And the response that I always give is exactly the same. It comes down to two things. First off is going to be the time at which you're hunting. And second off is going to be the locations which you are hunting at a given time. The animals in Call of the Wild are very simple to understand. They go to certain different areas of the map at certain different times, depending on what they're doing. Now, there's three different types of things that the animals animals will do. The first one is they will be drinking, the second one is that they will be feeding, and the third one is that they are going to be resting. It's eat, sleep, drink, repeat. But what's absolutely crucial for you guys is that you go around your reserves in harmony with the times of the animal need zones. Currently around this lake, there is absolutely no animals to be seen whatsoever. Doesn't matter how long I stay here for, there's going to be no animals that are going to appear. And the reason for this is that currently it's 1.44 in the afternoon, whereas the animals that are usually around this lake are here from 9 in the morning until 11.30 or 12. So the simple fix for this is that I'm going to go into to my tent here and I'm going to reset time to the time that I expect them to be there which is going to be around 10 45 I'm going to set my time to 9 45 and then what we should see is that animals immediately start to come on in which is why I've not edited this bit out just because I want to show you guys how effective it is by simply just changing your time now as we have a look on around here you can see there we've got a fallow deer we've got a couple more and then we should also have another couple of fallow deer coming in. And you guys saw right there, literally all I did was come over to that tent and change my time. And now all of a sudden, what was once a dead lake now has plenty of animals around it. But if you're still not having too much success at finding the animal times, then one thing that I would suggest is if you have a look down in the description of this video, there's a link to a spreadsheet where all of the animal needs and times are listed and that should massively help you guys out. But as always guys, if you are trying to find any animals around the map and you're having some difficulty, then I do have hunting guides for every single reserve in the game currently. And the link to that playlist is in the top right of your screen. But now that you know how to find your animals, the next thing is going to be how to take them down correct. So let's go ahead and jump onto another reserve and let's start talking about positioning. Now then when it comes to taking on your shot, there's a couple of things that you need to check before you go ahead and pull the trigger. The first one is going to be that the gun that you're using is compatible for the animals. So in front of me here, I have a plain bison. Now I need to make sure that I'm using the right gun when I take on this shot otherwise i'm going to damage the trophy rating that i get from shooting the animal and the way that you do this is by going into your inventory going to your ammunition and having a look at the bullets that you're about to use with the gun so for example if i wanted to use my m1 which i've been using on the fallow deer you can see that down in the bottom right there it says recommended classes four to eight now the plains bison are a class nine animal meaning that this bullet wouldn't be any good so instead what I need to do is make sure that I'm using my 300 Magnum here, which is suitable for classes 7 to 9. Now then, if you're unsure of what class the animal is, all you need to do is go ahead and spot it. And you will see in the top right there, it says Plains Bison. And you can see just underneath the health bar of the animal, it has a little animal icon with a number 9 next to it, which indicates the class of the animal. For example, there is, I believe, a couple of pronghorn here. And you can see that when I spot those, the number is a number 4, which means that these are a class 4 animal. 
animal. Now, and the easiest vital organ to aim for is going to be the lungs as they have the largest surface area, and that tends to be what I go for. So I usually make sure that I take the shot on when the animal is broadside, meaning that it's 90 degrees to where I am. So this plane's bison right here is a perfect example. The animal is directly 90 degrees to me, and I know that the lungs are directly behind the front leg. So I'm gonna go ahead, take my shot, and you can see from the health going down there that I have hit a vital organ. Now, that can usually be a good indicator as to if you've hit a vital organ or not, how quick the animal goes down. For example, if I go ahead and get my M1 here, because that's suitable for class 4 to 8 animals, and I take on a couple of shots on the pronghorn, you'll be able to see that when I hit it in a vital organ, it goes down straight away. But if I don't, like I'm going to try and mess up on this one here, or this one here, if I don't hit it in the vital organ, it's going to run away for a lot longer. So that's always a way that you can tell. If the animal goes down fairly quick, chances are you've hit the vital organ. If it doesn't, chances are you've missed, which means that if you can get another shot lined up, try and take on that second shot to secure the vital organ, which means that when you get to the stage where I am, you'll be able to see these plane spice and head on and start taking shots at them and you'll be able to start dropping them because you'll know exactly where the vital organs are and you'll even be able to take on head-on shots like that where you know that you're going to hit them in the heart. So you can see from this first plane's bison that we have hit the liver and the left lung, which are both two vital organs. And if we go ahead and check on the harvest screen there, you can see that I've used the correct ammo. I've shot the animal two times or less. I've kept the trophy organs intact, which is the horns on the plane's bison. And I've also hit at least one vital organ or more. So I suppose my bonus tip for the placement is going to be don't give up. It's okay to mess up a shot every now and again, especially if the animal isn't a diamond. And with practice, you will get better and better. Moving on now to tip number four, which is going to be tracking the animals down. So when you take a shot on at an animal, it may take a little while for it to go down, meaning that you're going to have to track it. Now... Now then, there are a couple of things that you can use to help you track an animal down. The first one is going to be that when you take an animal down, the hunting pressure will be created. Now, if you put your marker dead in the center of that hunting pressure, what you will find when you get over there is going to be the blood splat created from the contact between the animal and the bullet. So we can see here that near enough in the center, we have our vital organ hit just now. And then following on from that, we can see that the track is highlighted and we just go ahead and carry on following that track until we come to the animal now it may not be a case of where you necessarily hit a vital organ but if you keep on following that track and the animal does go down eventually you will be able to go ahead and find it the other way that you can use tracks for hunting is going to be that there are tracks all over the map from animals that you may not even know exist. For example, right here, there is a plains bison track, which I can go ahead and follow. Now, I could follow it two different ways. One way is that I could follow it to where the animal is currently. But the other way in which tracks can be used is by following them to their need zone. So, for example, even though there is no animal here currently, what I can do is I can follow these plains bison tracks in... And I can see that right here, there is a whole bunch of tracks on the ground, which represents the Plains Bison drink zone. So I've been able to unlock this drink zone, and I know that this Plains Bison, I can expect it to be here between 10 and 11 a.m. So I can go off and I can hunt the rest of my map, reset time to around 10 a.m., come to this area, and I will find a Plains Bison drinking. We've covered need zones and hunting pressure. We've covered shot placement and we've also covered tracking. The final thing that I wish that I knew when I first started playing the game was about the skills and the perks that are in game, which are things that you unlock that will massively help stabilize your shots. They will help you with spotting animals and they will help improve your overall hunting experience. Now then the way that you access these is by going to your escape menu and you can see on the left hand side that you have skills and you have perks. Now, all of these have goodies that you can unlock. For example, locate tracks, which gives you extra information about the tracks that you come across. If you go into your ambusher here, there's some really crucial things that you can unlock. For example, spotting knowledge, which gives you extra information about the animals that you spot. And the best one, in my opinion, is going to be this one right here, which is your tier two ambusher. And that is going to be sight spotting. It means that you no longer need to spot animals using binoculars. You can do it directly from your scope instead. But in addition to that, under your perks, you're able to unlock this one right here, which is your zeroing, which means that you can zero in your shots to either 300, 150, or 75 meters with the main rifles, or you can go ahead and scale them into either 150, 100, or 50 meters with the smaller rifles and the shotguns as well. This is going to make you a lot more accurate, but it's also going to mean that you don't have to waste as much time trying to figure out information about the animals before you take the shot on. 
Now then, I have spent a lot of time trying out different skill and perk combinations until finally I found my best setup, which is currently in the top right. And I would highly recommend that you guys go ahead and copy that one if you want to have the best balance for your rifle hunting. Now, if you're using something like bows or shotguns, then you may need to adjust it slightly to suit them guns better. And that summarizes the top five things that I wish that I knew all those hours ago when I first started playing that I had to learn through trial and error. Hopefully this will mean that some of you guys can save yourselves that little bit of time and start getting to the things that actually matter, which is getting those beautiful animals down and getting some diamonds up into your lodge. If you have enjoyed this video, of course, please do go ahead and give it a like, but also subscribe to the channel if you want to come back for more content that I upload. And I will catch you all in the next video. So until then, thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the hunt out there. Peace.